Hello, friends. Welcome to the Aspen Local Update from the Aspen Daily News. My name is Oliver Sharp. Very excited to be joined today by Clint Kinney, Snowmass Town Manager, as well as Tracy Truelove, Pitkin County Public Information Officer. Hello to you both. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Uh, and Clint, let's start with you. Can you tell me a bit about uh, the policy team um, that was put together here during the pandemic and leading into our vaccination process and your role on that team? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think Pitkin County deserves a lot of kudos for working collaboratively with the state, with uh, municipalities, with a bunch of different team members. And uh, when the when the state put together its timeline and phases about who was going to be um, vaccinated when, they had a lot of uh, uh, they had a lot of information for us to deal with, but there was still some gray area. So uh, the county pulled together a, a group from the school district, from the hospital, from municipalities, from a bunch of other sectors. And we tried to work through those gray areas to understand how best to get the most people vaccinated as soon as possible and uh, who should be first, who's most at risk, those types of issues. So it was a collaborative effort, uh, a group effort. And uh, there's probably 10 or 12 people on the team that worked together and uh, answered a lot of hard questions between us all. And. Clint, tell me about how you're feeling uh, with where we are in the process right now, just subjectively. Um, what are you hearing around town in Snowmass and throughout Pitkin County? So the the phases have changed a lot since the beginning. Um, you know, at the, when the state put them out earlier, a month or two ago, they were just one, two, three categories. They've continued to add categories. I think to their credit, they've continued to evaluate the best way to save most lives. But when they continue to evaluate that changes who gets what shot when and when that changes something that adds more gray and i think as a group we've we've worked through that gray to try to be as clear as we can i think um in the village here and I, i'd even say for the county i think we're doing a really great job of getting shots in arms and at the end of the day that's our goal is to get the most shots in arms that we can and uh, the team that's out at the tent doing it is killing it the operations team's doing it and uh, our policy group, our policy team is just making sure that we're getting the most folks in there that we can that, that ha are at the greatest risk. Excellent. And Tracy, can you um, add a little more clarity to that around the phases? Where are right now? I know, as Clint mentioned, that there's a, a number of different levels within each phase. Uh, where do we stand right now in Pickin County? I'll do my best to add clarity around it, but I'll tell you that, you know, the state kind of surprises us sometimes with the changes that are made and we, we're always kind of playing catch up. But what I can um, run through with you is that we've really gone through that first phase of healthcare workers. Quickly, we moved into public safety and law enforcement, and then we've done educators, which was, you know, one people were really looking forward to. And we worked closely and the school districts were on the policy team. So we worked closely with getting educators through the mass vaccine clinic. So we have moved into what we're calling, oh, it's called the 1B3 phase. And in that, the state um, has people aged 16 to 59 with two plus comorbidities. And right now we're working really closely with Aspen Valley Hospital and primary care for physicians to be sure they're reaching out to their patients to let them know. We also, though, are still encouraging people to sign up for the vaccine notices on our website, because again, that's helping us have direct communication as we know these, these phases are changing. So in that 1B3, we've got that folks with comorbidities. And then the priority, and I had to use my cheat sheet because it's so confusing, I didn't want to get this wrong, but we're also in that 60 plus category in that 1B3. And I think it's important that we're committed to continuing to vaccinate the people identified in that category, even though the state has made this change to add a new phase, which is that 1B4, and I'll go into that in a moment. But I think there's some confusion people have that they're going to be left behind and they're not. We're going to keep moving with the decisions that have been made by that policy group and here in our community and then kind of playing catch up with what the, the state phase changes have been. So again, also in that 1B3, we have the frontline essential workers and that includes grocery and agriculture. And then we have, we've worked with the postal service, with public transit. We've worked with faith leaders and human services, people working as caseworkers and direct care providers and we've started frontline essential journalists so again that had already kind of started when this new change had happened now let me move into what that 1b4 is category it's identified as people 50 and over so again if you're in that group and you haven't gone to our vaccine notices go sign up get the information in there so we can have some direct communication with you as vaccine becomes available 
That's also students and um, well, student facing higher education faculty and staff. So CMC, people working at CMC are gonna be in that one before category. They have identified the state has frontline essential as food restaurant services, manufacturing, continuity of local government and continuity of state government. And then also 16 to 49 years old with one comorbidity. So people, you know, you can go to our website, we're gonna have all that information there, but you just can't be too aggressive on getting into these systems so you can get vaccinated. Yeah, and it's important to note that um, people go when they're kind of when their number is called and they fit into one of these eligible phase groups. Uh, it's important for people to go to get vaccinated as soon as possible, right? Because then it helps everybody down the line uh, kind of move through the process. And uh, ultimately, we are trying to get as many people vaccinated as quickly as possible. Does that sound right? You're absolutely right. You know, this is if, if you're looking for the vaccine, you know, be aggressive about getting on lists, you know, here in Picking County. Um, you know, it's important to note that we just, again, the allocations come in in a very strange way. So we might have at a clinic one week that's that it, over a thousand people and then we're actually doing second doses. But that's another important point, Oliver, that you made me think of. The state did release that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is going to start to roll out to us as well. And that's a one dose clinic. And so that's going to also change our operations a little bit. So there's just Again, a lot of opportunity coming your way. Get into our system so we can communicate with you um, it's, if, if you wanna be vaccinated. And I think, again, we've heard from a lot of the uh, doctors share too that it doesn't matter which one. So it doesn't matter if it's the Pfizer, the Moderna or the J&J, just there's gonna, you're gonna be in a safer place if you've gotten to get the vaccine. Gotcha. And you, you mentioned how important it is for people to register. So they are getting the communication from your team. Uh, I know you guys are having a community meeting this week as well, where people can get some more information. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. We are holding a community meeting. It's been a while since we've had one. So it's tomorrow evening from six to seven. You can find our meetings on the Picking County website and the Zoom link to them. We are going to open it up for a little bit of question and answer time after the panelists give some updates. But we have Aspen Valley Hospital will be there for an update. The um, public health team is there to share. And I, another thing I want to kind of share too is, you know, we've seen our incident levels going down, but we we still are needing to be, you know, super aware of our surroundings. We're still needing to do those things we've always asked people to do. Even though you've been vaccinated, we're still having, you know, we're still wearing masks. We're still asking you to physical distance. There's a lot of things that we still just have to keep towing the line on so that we can keep moving through this phase of vaccine and the pandemic. Right, remain vigilant out there, even though you and your friends are getting vaccinated. Uh, I will say psychologically, it's so nice. We've been doing these interviews a lot uh, to finally have vaccines getting into people's arms, as you say, it's it's so nice. And thank you, uh, Clint Kinney, Tracy Trulove, to you and your efforts and efforts of all your team in, in getting this community vaccinated uh, means a lot and we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking us along on the ride. We appreciate that. And you're helping us get a lot of information out. So that's really helpful. Well, you're always welcome here. Thanks to all of you for joining us on the Aspen Local Update. You can find more at aspendailynews.com and across the social media networks. We'll see you tomorrow.